Hello and welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, our topic today is how to use Luminar as a plugin for Aurora HDR. Now, the difference between Aurora and Luminar, Aurora was specifically designed to create high dynamic range images. You could either use one image or you could use a bracketed set of images to pull the most dynamic range out of these images to get the best shots possible. Let me just show you what we're gonna be working on. So this is the final product. And this is what we're gonna start with. So we'll start here and we're gonna finish here. All right, so, and we're gonna be doing that, which is really cool with one image. So with, with Aurora HDR, we're able to take that one image and pull as much of the, of the dynamic range we can from it, jump over to Luminar, create some beautiful magic, and then bring it back in to Aurora. So that's what we're gonna work on. Now, before we begin, let's take a moment and thank our partner. Fujifilm, make images, share stories, and experience moments at the speed of life with Fujifilm. Thank you for staying at home with us. All right, guys, and we're back. All right, so let's dive right in. Here we are inside Aurora. Now, what I'm going to do is start over. So I'm going to open up a new image. I won't say this one. And it's the, here we go, Cowboys, the original. Good. Now, once it's open, here's what we're going to do. We can come in here, and I just, I like turning this on just because I want to make sure if there's any chromatic aberration, I wanted to remove it. And now I'm going to create an HDR. Now, HDR, well, the, the dynamic range here is caused because the sky back there is brightly lit. The guys are in shadow. And then the foreground was um, in shadow. And look at this. Before and after. So notice the guys here. We're getting more detail being pulled out of them and the horses and out of the trees and out of the, the shrubs. So this is great. I mean, look, look at how it pulled all that from just one image. Now let's jump over into Luminar. So from plugins, I'll click Luminar and it's going to launch it. Now, if you're having issues going from Aurora to Luminar, let's say, uh, like uh, Julie said she has Aurora, but she hasn't used it in a while. Make sure the plugin for Luminar is installed. So you can just do that inside Luminar, file, install plugins. Um, if you need to, or I'm sorry, what you need to do is make sure you check it. If it doesn't transfer over, uninstall Aurora, then reinstall Aurora, and it'll be working fine because uh, you're not going to see it inside the plugins. All right. So here we are now. And I did create under my own um, user looks. I did create a, a look called Cowboys. And let me show you that real quick. And the reason why I did this, here we go, is for two reasons. One, it's a good reference for me to remember exactly what I did when I created this. Because once you start editing, you're going to start catching yourself you know, going down a rabbit hole or down a path. And then you'll sit back and go, wow, what did I just do? Well, here, if I do this correctly, it's going to show me all the tools I used to create this look. Now, we're going to start with the essential tools. We'll jump on over into the sky replacement, of course. And then, of course, for portrait, I wanted to brush up on their face. So... I'm going to start over, and here's a new feature, by the way, with 4.3, the reset adjustment um, option on the bottom. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm back to where I started. First thing I want to do is let's replace that sky. And if I'm not mistaken, was that dynamic sky um, 2? We'll check. Nope. Let's see, sunset maybe too. Actually, I know which one it was. 
all the way up to the top. Here we go. Dramatic dong. And I'm so sorry. Let me try one more. Dark dawn. Yep, there it was. Dark dawn. So I used dark dawn, and I believe I downloaded that from the Skylum um, pay, uh, images. So go to download new sky images, and you can see that on our marketplace. All right. So I have this here. Now the issue I'm going to run into is it's not matching the color the color of the scene. So let's try to relight it just a little bit. Too much, right about. All right, here's gonna work. So it's relighting the scene, making it look a little darker. Now that I have that here, I wanna come over to color. And with color, I'm sorry, I'm gonna come down to landscape. And let's do golden hour. There we go. Now golden hour is gonna add that nice gold tones to, to the to the grass or to the foreground there we go good I like where that's at now of course I love yeah, and hence who this is going to bring out some hidden details of the of the image that's it and structure this is going to be the traditional HDR look which is oh, one moment let me let me reset NDI, one second. I'm glad I caught that. All right, one second. And here we go. There we go. And he, this is the traditional, this right here is, is the, the traditional HDR look that I'm not a huge fan of. So I'm gonna bring it, dial it way back right about to here. So before, after, good, just a little bit, but this is what's gonna really help me, the detail enhancer. I wanna move that up, the medium slider up a bit. Good, and that's gonna give me the look I'm going for. Awesome, good. Now the issue is the riders. So I want their faces to be, to be more lit so let's come over to the portrait tools, AI enhancer or portrait enhancer. Now from here, watch this. I'm gonna go overboard so you can see it. Look at the faces. How cool is that that he can find those small faces in such a big scene? Get right about there. Let's see. Four and after great so that did a great job for me there now um, while I'm at it I'm gonna come back up to color and let's remove so some, some of the redness some of the redness right here on, on the face so I'm targeting just the reds I'll go to the extreme here we go right there yeah, right about there is good. Awesome. All right, so once again, before, after, and then for the color, before, after, and that was just to pinpoint the face. So let's look overall what we have. And I'll zoom in just a little bit more. There we have it. All right, so let's check, let's check this. Here's before, and then after. All right, once I'm done, I'll click apply. That's gonna shoot me back over into Aurora, and at that point, it's gonna create a new layer inside Aurora, and I can decide if I wanted to add more to it or keep it as is export it and do whatever I want. So once it gets over there, we'll, we'll check that out. So typically in a case, in a scene like this, I do like to use Aurora to bring out all that dynamic range. <sighs> Excuse me. I like to bring out all that dramatic dynamic range into the image. And then I like to use Luminar to further enhance it. So here we are, we're back into Aurora and notice it made two layers. 
Here's the original layer that we started with. And now here's the new layer that we apply Luminar to. And if we need to, we can dial it back to zero. And then, here we go, slowly increase it. Let's see, right, oh, right about to here. Let's see if 76 is doing it. Thank you. Oh, more. Right about, yeah, yeah, we're probably going to end up with like, yeah, that's good, right about here, 90-ish. Good. So if it started looking too over, overboard, then that's a great way to, to dial it back and to make sure you're not over-processing the image. All right? Well, guys, there you have it. So that's just one way of using Aurora and combining it with Luminar. Pull the most dynamic range out of the image and using Aurora and then fine-tune it using Luminar and then bring it back again. All right? Well, hey, guys, thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you at the next coffee shop break.